Okay. Today, before we move on to our next section, we want to, or I want to talk about uh, an extension from yesterday. Yesterday, we talked about exponential growth, and today we need to touch on exponential decay first. So exponential, probably ought to unfreeze that. Expo, exponential decay. Extremely similar to what we talked about yesterday. Um, yesterday was the exponential growth. Exponential decay, your function rule stays the same. All right? In exponential decay, you still got y is equal to a times b to the x power. All right? And again, you know, b right here, this is now called your decay factor instead of your growth factor. This is your decay factor. All right. And yesterday, your growth factor was written as one plus the decimal version of your growth. Well, your decay factor is always written as one minus decimal uh, decimal let's see decimal form of decay all right um, your exponent again is how many times the event occurs. And your A again is still your initial amount. Initial, I'm gonna call it value. All right, so you've got an initial value, you've got a decay factor, raised to the power and the power is how many times the decay in this case occurs all right so we're going to do an example and you'll see that it's very similar to yesterday this being the key portion right here again this part right here the one minus the decimal form of the decay all right one minus the decimal form of the decay so um, what we got going on here in this example problem, let's see, the kilopascal is a unit of measure for atmospheric pressure. It says that this atmospheric pressure at sea level is about 101. kilopascals. I'm not sure what those are, but they sound nasty. For every thousand meter increase, in altitude, The pressure decreases eleven point five percent. What is the approximate pressure at altitude three thousand meters? So what is, we're going to call it AP, atmospheric pressure at altitude 3000.
meters. All right, so our Y, we can use Y, or we can just use AP, which is atmospheric pressure. Our atmospheric pressure is going to be equal to our initial value. Well, they say that at sea level, it's 101 times, all right? This pressure is going down by 11.5%. So right here, this is going to be 1 minus 11.5%. percent That's going to be move the decimal to the left twice, right? So we move it to the left twice. So we're going to go 0 0.115. And now... at sea level so if you're starting at sea level with a pressure of 101 and you're going to altitude 3000 all right our rate here is for every thousand meters so how many times is this event going to take place say again it's three exactly it's three it's going to happen three times because at each thousand increment, you get a decrease of 11.5%. Well, we're going from sea level to 3,000, so it's going to happen three times. So let's clean this up here. Our atmospheric pressure is going to be equal to 101 times 1 minus 0.115, which is 0.885. And that's raised to the third power. Who is that? Tia. Come on in. All right, so our atmospheric pressure at 3,000 meters is going to be equal to, we got 101 times 0.885 to the third power. And I get 70. And that would be in these kilopascals or kp. All right. So very similar to what you did yesterday. Your only difference between exponential growth and exponential decay is right here in green. All right. Right here in green. Instead of one plus a growth factor that you did yesterday, when you're dealing with exponential decay or something losing value over time, it's one minus the decimal version of your decay percentage. Everybody okay with that? Okay. All right, then. Yes, ma'am. So with the decay, and I'm placing on 70? Yeah. We typed all that in the calculator. Typed 101 times 0.885 raised to the third power. And it equals 70. Yeah. This is, yeah. Remember yesterday how you took the growth factor and you added it to one? All right, when you're decaying and you're losing value or you're losing uh, geometric, or not geometric, but atmospheric pressure, now you're going to subtract that. You're losing 11.5% every thousand meters. So you got to convert that to your decimal and subtract it from one. Good. Makes sense. All 
All right, and then the second point, second thing we need to talk about today is called, uh, we're going to talk about geometric sequences. Geometric sequences, all right? And we're going to say that in a geometric sequence, The ratio of any term to its preceding term is a constant. In a geometric sequence, the ratio of any term to its preceding term I'm just going to say let's say is the same All right Here's what that means okay Let's say that you have a sequence of numbers and you've got a 2, and then an 8, and a 32, and a 128. And dot, dot, dot means it keeps going. In your assignment today, you're going to get asked, is the sequence geometric? Let's see, how do they word it? Is the sequence geometric? Well, in a geometric sequence, the ratio of any term to its preceding term is the same. The ratio, if you take the ratio of 8 to its preceding term, the ratio of 8 to 2, the ratio of 8 to 2, that's equal to 4, isn't it? The ratio of 32 to its preceding term, which is 8, that equals 4 as well. The ratio of 128 to its preceding term, which is 32, that equals 4. All right, so this is an example of a geometric sequence. Each term in the sequence is being multiplied by 4 to get the next term. All right? And the ratio of any term to its preceding term is four. So that defines a geometric sequence. Now, when you're working with a geometric sequence, you have two types of formulas, all right, or definitions. You've got what's called a recursive formula and in a recursive formula let's get this terminology down here and then I'll show you what it means your a sub 1 is equal to a your a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 times r. For n is greater than or equal to 2. Move it where? Get 
Can I move it now? Explicit formula. That's where our a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 for n greater than or equal to 1. And then we're going to say that Every geometric sequence has a starting value and common ratio. We're going to say starting value parentheses, that's your a sub 1, and common ratio, that's your r, the starting value and ratio define the sequence now you have to have this down but in a second it's going to make a lot more sense So right now what we're going to do is we're going to find we're going to find the recursive and explicit formula the given sequence. All right. Here's the first sequence that we're given. We got 7, 21, 63, 189. And then what we're going to do here, let's do a, uh, a recursive column and an explicit column. All right, this sequence right here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to define our first term. So our a sub 1 is equal to 7. And then we're going to find our common ratio. 
or common ratio. That's our R. Common ratio here, you find that by dividing a term by its preceding term. So 21 divided by 7 equals? It equals 3. And 63 divided by 21? That equals 3. And 189 divided by 63? equals three. So your common ratio is three. So look, here's how you write your two formulas. Right up here. When we're writing this recursive formula, we needed an a sub one and an a sub n. All right. So look, in our recursive, our a sub 1 is equal to 7. Our a sub n is equal to 2. Our a sub n minus 1 times our common ratio, which is 3. Oops. Our explicit formula, our explicit formula is, is in this form. a sub n equals our a sub 1 times our r to the n minus 1. So our a sub n is equal to 7 times 3 common ratio of 3 to the n minus 1. Now, this formula This is used to find the nth term in a sequence. The explicit formula is used to find the nth term in a sequence. Now, I know you've all seen this question before on standardized tests and things like that, where you're given a sequence of numbers, and then you're asked to find the 15th term, or the 17th term, or the 31st term, all right? And what a lot of people do is they sit there with their calculator, and they just start pushing times 3, times 3, times 3, times 3, times 3. Times three and they count how many times they push three. And if you miss up on your count at all, you get the question wrong. So if we had to find the 15th term, all right, the 15th term is equal to, the 15th term in this sequence with this explicit formula would look like this. Your a sub 15 would be equal to 7 times 3 raised to the 15 minus 1 power. That's how the formula is used. All right? So the 15th term in the sequence is going to be equal to 7 times 3 raised to the 14th power, which is just an extension of what you did yesterday. So instead of pushing the calculator button times 3 15 times, and trying to keep track of that, the 15th term in this sequence, your a sub 15, would be equal to 
I'm going to do 3 raised to the 14th first. Times 7. Alright, so that's a big old number right there. That's 3 million. 348,000. No, that's more than that. Take that back. That's 33 million. Thirty-three, four eighty, seven eighty-three, thirty-three, four eighty, seven eighty-three. Right, and that's just fifteen terms into a sequence that's has a common ratio of three. All right, so let's do a couple more of these and then I'm gonna turn you loose on your practice for today. Same directions right here. Recursive and explicit. Here's our sequence, two, four, eight, 16. Two, four, eight, 16. All right, remember when you're writing your recursive, all right, you need your a sub one. Our a sub 1 in this case is what? What's the a sub 1 here in this sequence? 2, good. Then we need our a sub n formula. All right, so our a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 times our common ratio. What's our common ratio here in this sequence? It's 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 16 divided by 8 is 2, so our common ratio is 2. All right, so now our explicit formula, our explicit formula. Follow this same format. We got a to the n is equal to our first term, which is 2, times our common ratio, which is 2, to the n minus 1 power. n always being the term number in the sequence. The term number that you're trying to find in the sequence. Y'all okay with that? All right, let's do one more where we got a, a decline going on. We'll go 40, 20, 10, 5. All right, so in our recursive formula, we need a first term, so our a sub 1 is equal to 40. We need an a sub n equal to a sub n minus 1 times our common ratio. Now, what's our look at our common ratio here. Term divided by preceding term, 20 divided by 40, 20 divided by 40, 20 divided, Selena, come, I'm sorry. 0.5, 10 divided by 20, 0.5, so you see what our common ratio is now when this thing's going down, it's going to be a number less than one, all right, so our common ratio here is 0.5. Put in parentheses if you want to not confuse it with this symbol for multiplication. Now your explicit formula is going to be a sub n is equal to first term of 40 times common ratio 0.5 to the n minus 1. Good with that? All right, let's find the um, let's find the ninth term in this sequence. Find the ninth term. It 
if we had to find the ninth term, we would say that our a sub 9 is equal to 40 times 0.5 to the 9 minus 1 power. And 9 minus 1 is 8, isn't it? So we go 0.5 raised to the 8th power equals, and then times 40. And we get 0.15625. So our a sub 9 is equal to Any questions there, guys? Okay, so in that handout that I gave you yesterday, your practice for today is going to be page 470. one through 32. And then for problems, twenty two to thirty two. Find the ninth term of each sequence. In addition to what they ask you to do, problems 22 through 20, 22 to 32, um, the first six problems write the explicit formula. The second six problems ask you to write the recursive formula. So what I want you to do in each of those, after you write the formulas, I want you to evaluate them for the ninth term in each sequence. All right. Just like you did right here. And that's going in the basket. That's in the basket. Or if you're an e-learner, you're going to email Upon completion, all right, any questions on what we talked about today? All right, if you don't have any questions, then you e-learners are excused. And I am going to end the meeting.